let's make things just a little bit crazier. I think sometimes I go a little bit too easy on you. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Sorry, there we go. We got seven plus negative 12 plus negative 17 plus 10 plus negative 33. If you had to just take a guess here, do you think your final answer will be positive or negative? negative. Why do you think it'll be negative? Because 33 is negative. The highest number of all of these is, is negative. But you know, but I got two positive numbers, seven and 10. But they won't be able to knock enough away from that negative 33, will they? No. Now there are different ways of going about simplifying this. Let's do it the way we were just doing it. So if I take these first two numbers together, what does that give me? It gives me a negative five, right? The negative number has a larger absolute value. I'm gonna take a long time here to finish or to do this problem. I wanna show you every single step. So if you get stuck, you can always go back to this. What about combining these next two terms? What's a negative five and a negative 17? Negative you said that with a question mark. Negative 22. Yes. All right. Because they're both negative, right? You lose 5, you lose 17, you've lost 22, right? And then I still have the plus 10 and the plus negative 33. Okay, what about these next two pieces? A negative 22 plus 10. Negative, negative 12? Yeah. You have a negative 22 here and a positive 10. Who has the larger absolute value? The negative. the negative number does. So you keep this a negative, and the difference between 22 and 10 is 12. And then finally, I've got my negative 33 here at the end. And so when you combine these guys, they're both negative. What do you have? Negative, negative what? Five. Negative 45. Do whatever you need to do in your mind. Make those connections to something you can relate to. If I lose $12 and then I lose $33, I've lost $45 altogether, right? Okay. If you were ever to you know, look at a credit card, when you use a credit card, when you swipe the card, that's a negative number. And then whenever you pay the credit card, that's a positive number, right? And you always hope to be able to pay that off every time. You hope. Otherwise, the negative number gets bigger. Yeah. And we don't even want to talk about how big that negative number gets. There's a lot of math that goes into that. It may give you an APR, but they charge you interest on your credit card on unpaid balances every single day. It's not every year, it's every single day. Look at the fine print. There's a daily percentage rate. But let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> let's go into the weekend on a happy note, right? <laughs> I want to talk to you about a couple of properties here with addition that are super awesome for us. One of these is the commutative property of addition. The commutative property of addition. The commutative property looks like this. It says that A plus B is the same as B plus A. So it says that if you're adding two numbers, it doesn't matter how you go about adding these. Uh, for example, If I have 5 plus 7, according to the commutative property, that's the same thing as me saying 7 plus 5. Do you guys believe that 5 plus 7 is 7 plus 5? Yes. Yes. Of course this is the same. Of course 12 equals 12. You guys agree with that? 
all right? Even if I have negative numbers, if I have negative 4 plus 1, this is the same as saying what? <coughs> 1 plus negative 4. Because you need to look and see what those numbers are. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to circle the operator here of addition. I'm going to circle this. What are the two add ins that you have? Negative 4 and positive 1, right? What are the two add ins that you have over here? 1 and negative 4. It's the same two add ins. So as long as we're adding, the order doesn't matter. Of course, just to make sure we are still paying attention to our signs, what is a negative 4 and a positive 1 combined through addition? It's a negative 3. So negative 3 here is the same as negative 3 on the other side. So that's one of the really neat properties that we have with addition. The other super neat property is called the associative property. The associative property of addition. <laughs> and here's what the associative property says. It talks about how pieces are grouped. So if I have three terms, A, B, and C, if I have parentheses here, this would mean you add A and B together, and then you would add C into that. That is the same thing as by regrouping, saying A plus the quantity B plus C. When we put together the commutative and associative properties, it means that how you add, the order doesn't matter. What is important to us whenever we are adding is that we are mindful of what the terms are and what their signs are. Let's go back and look at the problem that we did at the very beginning of this video. We had the problem up above. Let me keep the commutative property here. This said 7 plus negative 12 plus negative 17 plus 10 plus negative 33. There are much easier ways of combining these guys since everything here is addition. Okay? Some people like to rearrange things so they can put together all of the negatives and then put together all of the positives. Because when you do that, it's just two separate addition problems. So you can do this using the commutative and associative properties you can rearrange this and you can say 7 plus 10 and then what are the negative numbers that you have? I got a negative 12, negative 17, and negative 33. So when I look at it this way and the associative and commutative properties allow me to do this, I can just worry about my positives. What's 7 plus 10? Oh, that's easy. And then what about your negatives? Now think about what you're doing with these negatives. You're losing 12. You're losing 17. You're losing 33. What is your total loss by adding all of these up? I'll give you a hint. What? It's negative 62. <coughs> Now, Rhonda, did you go 12 plus 17 plus 33? Did you do 12 plus 17 first? No. What did you do first? 17 plus 33. I like that. Now, why do you think Rhonda did 17 and 33 first? No. 7 plus 3 is a 10, so we get a number that ends in 0, right? I'm not sure if we've talked about this before, but if you can find those numbers that will end in a 0 when you add them, it makes your life a lot easier. So 17 and 33 is what? 50, yes, 50. 50 and 12 is 62. Now that I have this, I've got a positive and a negative. Who has the larger absolute value? Negative. So my answer will be a negative. And then maybe off here on, 
over on the side, maybe put a little thought bubble here, I have to find the difference between 62 and 17. Remember how I said when you do subtraction, the larger number is always on top. Yes? Yeah. So I can't do the 2 minus 7, so I borrow a 10 from the 6 to make that a 5, which turns that into a 12. Now that I've borrowed, I can make this a 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. So my answer is negative 45. What did I have the first time I did this problem? I had the same thing. I should have had the same thing, right? What you find out a lot of times in math is that you can go about this in many different ways, but the answer should still be the same. Now, I don't know if you saw this. I want to point it out to you. We said that 7 plus 10 was 17, right? Mm -hmm. What are 17 and negative 17? They are opposites. The fancy word is what? Additive inverses, so what does 17 and negative 17 become? They become zero. So at the very beginning, 7, 10, and negative 17, these guys would cancel each other out. In a tug of war, they end up in the middle. And you would be left with a negative 12 and a negative 33. Combining these negatives would give you what? You still get negative 45, right? reorder, regroup, to make it easy on you. If you don't want to do that, you may still go straight across. 7 plus negative 12 is negative 5, and then negative 22, and then negative 12, and so on. You can do that, but you can also rearrange. By rearranging, you can make your life a little bit easier.